Manchester United have just won the FA Cup. Max Brannan on Man United's statistically lowest finish in Premier League history has just won the FA Cup. Some football clubs just have this knack of winning even when they're at their worst. Real Madrid have done it a few times. And we've got to break it down. We've got to speak about it. For me, Manchester City's worst performance probably of this calendar year. Make sure you go down, drop a like on the video. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel. Big up to every single person on this journey. We just hit 7,000 subscribers. To put that into perspective, we launched this channel at the very, very end of February. We're not even four months down the line and we've just hit 7K subscribers. A big up to you watching right now. You are an absolute machine. For, for just You're just a machine watching every video. So look, thank you from the bottom of my heart. FA Cup, Man United have just beaten City in a team where there was no Rasmus Hoyland in the number nine. There was no Di Diallo, who Amadella, who was the hero of the previous round against Liverpool. Um, and Hoyland, the hero who scored the winning penalty. Brave, brave lineup from Eric Ten Hag. He went with a midfield three, very, very compact of Amrabat, Mainu, and Scott McTominay. And Kobe Mainu, this guy, this guy, man, like when you talk about generational talents, 19 years of age from Stockport, just an absolute player, man. Absolute player, 19 years of age, and scores the second goal in an FA Cup final. When you talk about big moments, when you talk about big matches, match deciding games, match deciding outcomes, sorry, for trophies, Kobe Mainu is him. He has got all the fundamentals. When we talk about taking the ball in on the turn, dropping the shoulder, beating his man, playing the right pass, tackling him holding players off, not afraid to pull out of a challenge, scoring goals. He has got every, he ticks every single box for me. The first goal comes out of absolutely nowhere. You know, Manchester City had United pinned down, but United were organised. They knew their roles. Every single player in this Manchester United team today can come off that pitch with their held, held high. Onana, and yes, Doku squeezed the goal in in the 87th minute, but he made save after save after save after save. You know, was claiming crosses, was punching corners. But we'll start with a goal. A moment of absolute madness. The ball gets played over the top, and Vardial and Ortega, they're both at fault for me. Vardial was complaining that Ortega should have come to deal with it, and Ortega's moaning at Vardial that he should have let him deal with it. You know, he heads the ball over the top of Ortega Vardio, who's been Manchester City's probably their best signing this window, uh, so this season, sorry, and genuinely been an unreal from scoring goals at the Bernabeu to scoring two goals in a Premier League game. You know, could have had a hat trick that game. But when you talk about errors, that is as big as you're going to get. That is a massive, massive, massive error. The ball goes over the top of Ortega. And the teenage Alejandro Garnacho, who has saved Ten Hag a lot of times this season. You know, he himself is 19 years of age. Another fantastic player. Two of the youngsters, two of the teenagers. He's even younger than Kobe Mainu, which is mad. Which is absolutely mad. Sorry, he's a, sorry, he's actually a nine months older. But two 19-year-olds on the score sheet today to dunk Manchester City out of the cup. And I'm going to say it right now. After that performance, City are in the mud. A terrible performance from City by their standards. As in my opinion, the best footballing team in the land. Absolutely dusted today. Out work, out fought. City had all the possession. 19 shots, four on target. 670-odd passes. But, you know, the first goal, Garnacho you know, capitalise it. He's gambling. He's, he's thinking there could be a mistake here. And there was a mistake. And he taps it into an empty net. And you're thinking, wow, 
That's gone against the run of play. That wasn't in the script. That wasn't planned. And then the second goal genuinely is a moment of absolute magic. It's a moment of magic from Manchester United. It really is. Truly a great goal. Rashford plays the ball over the top to Garnacho on the right-hand side. He plays it into Bruno Fernandes. And the weight of the pass from Bruno Fernandes into Kobe Mainu first time. And Kobe Mainu calmly slots it into the back of the net. But the pass from Bruno Fernandes genuinely is absolutely exquisite. Exquisite. Like, absolutely insane pass. Plays it into Kobe Mainu, and he then tucks it into the back of the net. And you're thinking, wow, Manchester United are 2-0 up. Two goals in nine minutes. They go into halftime. They deserve their lead. They were the better team overall, in my opinion. Yes, he had a lot more chances. But Kevin De Bruyne had an absolute disaster class. They were so wasteful. Foden didn't turn up, in my opinion. Haaland hits the bar in the second half. But you go into the fir- into the end of the first half and you're like, wow, Man United have now won, won this half. They've stuck to their roles. They've been organised brilliantly from Eric Ten Hag, who the uncomfortable conversation is now. He's been in the Premier League for two years and has now won an FA Cup and the League Cup uncomfortable conversations. Is he actually that bad or is it this squad? Because this squad today, in that first half for me, that's Man United's best performance of the season. But that first half is the best half of football they've played all season. To a man, they were brilliant. You go into the second half. When I looked at half time, I was thinking the only two players that actually had open space to run at players was Vardy out and Silva. So, Pep, naturally, you know, we know the way he is. He made some changes at halftime. He brought on Jeremy Doku, who probably was City's best player in the second half. He brought him on for Kovacic, and he brought on Manuel Akanji for Ake. Then in the 58th minute, he took off De Bruyne. When Alvarez and Doku come on, it changed the game for City. They were running at players. They had a little bit more space. Man United naturally were backing off and just saying, hey, come on to us and we'll just counter-attack you. And they did that very well. Even when Rasmus Hoyland come off at the very come on at the very, very end, even he did really well, holding the ball up a couple of times and winning a couple of free kicks. But the pace of Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Hoyland, Garnacho, Kobe Mainu, City couldn't live with it. And this is the way you beat City. This is the way that Tottenham have always managed to get a result at home. Obviously, this season was 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 didn't go to plan, but even when you think of when Wigan beat them in the FA Cup, even when you think of, you know, when Madrid beat them earlier in the Champions League, the way you play against City is you do not go toe-to-toe with Man City because then you're going to get knocked out. You're going to get RKO'd. When Arsenal got a result at um, the Etihad and when Arsenal beat uh, City at the Emirates, they all played the same way. You just sit back, defend for your lives and counter-attack. And Man United today genuinely... A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performance. Best performance of the season from Manchester United. Truly, they were fantastic. They were absolutely fantastic today. And I'm not I'm not a United fan, but I can appreciate good performances. Second half, obviously, Pep made those changes. They were knocking on the door. They were knocking on the door. You know, Doku managed to beat wan a couple of times. City managed to pull one back here. I think it was in the 87th minute. Docker receives the ball on the left-hand side, has a strike with his right foot. It just about beats Onan, who had a very, very good game. And he kind of parried it into the side netting. But should he have done better? Yes, he probably should have. But take nothing away from the strike. It was a very, very, very good uh, good goal. It was in the bottom corner. Man United then made a couple of changes, brought in Lindelof or Garnacho, made some out for McTominay. And... You know, Man United secure a sensational 2-1 win over their rivals. And Man United now have have won 13 FA Cups. So that, I mean, even at their worst, even at their worst, Man United, with their lowest Premier League finish in their history, have managed to win an FA Cup. And what makes this even better is Chelsea drop into the Conference League and Newcastle are out of Europe. And Man United now have had a better season than Chelsea, Newcastle and Spurs. 
you know, they win the FA Cup. Ten Hag wins his second trophy since being Manchester United manager, winning both domestic cups now. The big question is, will he be there next season? And I think based on this performance alone, that the dressing room isn't as toxic as people make out to be. And that these players, when 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 is required, play for Ten Hag. We saw their performance against Liverpool, where they won it at the death in extra time. Yes, they didn't play well against Coventry, but they showed resilience and won a penalty shootout. And they they have now won two trophies in 15 or 16 months under Eric Ten Hag. And the dressing room, I think, can and has proven today they can get behind him. You know, to win two trophies in two years, you know, that's more. there's more trophies in Liverpool have won in the last two years. There's more trophies in Chelsea, Villa, Arsenal, Spurs, Newcastle, you know. And 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 they come back with the FA Cup. So I don't I don't I don't believe in a lot of the things that gets reported around the Man United dressing room is as toxic as it's ever been. But right now they are the FA Cup champions. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see. You